Hello, hello, this is Joanne Hewitt. Uh, I am an independent uh, Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I do have a blog that you can see at lovetocreate.typepad.com. Today, I want to talk to you about how to make a floating pop-up gate card. We are going to be using, well, mainly the celebration brochure. Uh, this will become live on January the 5th. Celebration will take place through the months of January and February. And it's a time when you can earn some free products by spending either $50 or $100 here in the United States. I can't open these. I wish I could, but I can't open them out up yet it's a little bit early this is what the mini catalog is going to look like and uh, let me just say this it is filled with wonderful wonderful things and you are going to be so excited if you haven't seen it yet so let me set that aside and uh, this will begin also on January 5th and it will go all the way to the end of April. That's a little bit shorter for this catalog than we've had the last little bit, but that just clears out some time for our new annual catalog to come out. And um, I think maybe it's in May, we'll see. So let me show you the card that I'm going to be making today. It's going to be using this stamp set, Adorable Owls. And this is one of the free stamp sets that you can earn in celebration. I hope it's not glaring too much. And we're going to use every stamp in here except for my friend um, today. So let me set that aside and we'll get started. This is the floating pop-up gate fold. Uh, using the adorable owls and this is a card that has a belly band to it So I'm going to pull off the belly band and show the goodness to you that's inside this card when I open it up There are our owls Hoot hoot you're so cute and they are floating there now you have to be careful how you close it or one of those things might be sticking out but that's no problem. Just close them together and then put your belly band back on. So let's get started on making this. And let me tell you, this is going to be on my blog post. Um, I believe it's December 18th that it will be on. And uh, I will have all of the measurements on my blog post. So we will just not worry a whole lot about those. I might say them, uh, I might not, uh, but they will be on my blog post. So let me set him aside for a moment and talk about what we're going to be using today. Uh, and I'm going to uh, bring in my kit that I have. So this is a little bit daunting when you first look at all of the pieces. And it was a lot to cut. Uh, it did take some time. The base of this is in Old Olive. It is for five and a half by eight and a half. And it is scored at two and one eighth from this end and two and eight for this end. So you just score it uh, on your trimmer at two and an eighth. And that would be right there score it and then just turn it around and do the same thing again go into two and one eighth okay so that's how we did that and then this has several layers so for the back of the card back here you've got a layer of soft suede and then a layer of this designer paper and this is called dandy oh hold on just a minute I should have had that memorized. That is near the end of the celebration brochure, Dandy Designs, and it is something that you can earn for a $100 purchase, and it is a pack of paper that has 48 sheets. Yes, you can earn a pack of paper with 48 sheets in it, and they are beautiful designs. This is another one of the designs that's on there. I'll show you the back of this one. 
So this is going to be the back of our card. And I just realized that I don't have my glue. It's been a really long time since I made a video. And I'm going to disappear just for a second. And I apologize about that. I really did try to have everything I needed here, but it's just been a long time and uh, not remembering that great. So let me go ahead and fold in from here. And I want to make sure that my ends, my sides meet there. And I'm just going to use a boom folder to burnish that. And then I'll do the same thing from this side. And it's not going to matter if uh, which direction. I mean, you can have it either way. It's the same. So I've got that. And let me go ahead and put this. So the back back here is the same size as a card. So I cut this just a little bit smaller. So instead of four and a fourth, it's four and an eighth. And instead of five and a half, it is five and three eighths. And let me just quickly show you on one thing. I'm not gonna do this for everything, but on that soft suede, if I'm going to be cutting that at five and three eighths, there's five and a half. I'm just going to go down an eighth at five and three eighths. I need to change my blade. Um, and then I'm going to be cutting this at four and one eighth. But I went ahead and made that big cut because these little side pieces are going to be the same length. So I can just go ahead and cut those from this. Now this is going to be two inches by the five, by the five and three eighths. And we already have uh, the length of that done. So all I have to do is, is cut two and then cut my other two, excuse me. I dropped my cutter the other day and my blade came out, and I evidently didn't get it back in exactly right. But look, on that half sheet of paper, I only have this much of waste if I cut it like that. And I found for all of the other things, they're all going to have the same length. Just make a cut and cut it from that, and you should be fine. I'm going to set that aside. And we're going to go ahead and add this piece. Now, I feel like we're wasting paper when we do this, and we really are. If you had something that you needed to cut out that was a soft suede color, you could cut that out with your dies out of the center of this. Then when you cover, cut it, uh, cover it up, you're not going to know that piece is missing down there. So if you have something, use that paper before you cut cover it up. Okay, so I'm going to add this to my card front, or to my card, actually my card inside. I like to use glue because I can move it around and get it exactly where I want it. You want to make sure that your sides are going to be able to fold, that that's not covered up. So there's that, and then these other pieces are going to go on the side once you would act like you're closing it. And let's see, am I... okay, let me get one from over here because I picked it up and put it with the other ones. Okay, so I'm just going to put my glue and glue this down here. And I do have a very thin uh, border around there. Okay, 
and then we'll do the same with this piece. So I think the pieces on this might be a bit intimidating because there's so many. And if you wanted to make it a little bit easier, you could leave out the soft suede uh, altogether. Uh, and that would get a little bit uh, less to do for each part of the card. So you can make it a little easier for yourself. Now because the soft suede there is two by five and three eighths, our small pieces here are going to be one and seven eighths by five and a fourth. Okay, so there's that, and this is the front. Okay, we're ready to put a, a, a belly band on there, but not quite. Okay, so with that little bit done, we'll start working maybe on the belly band. So I've got a strip here that is one inch by 10 inches, and I'm just going to fold it around the card. Actually, I'm going to start from the back there, and I'm going to fold it around. And you're going to want to fold it so that it will slide because you're going to be taking your belly band on and off of the card. So I have that like that and I'm going to put some glue down here to hold that belly band. I want to make sure that everything's straight so nothing's poking out on each side here and it appears to be pretty straight. Now I put my seam on the front of the card and I did that because the, the, uh, the uh, layer that we're going to add here is going to cover up that seam. You won't see it, but then on the back it looks nice. So let me, I'm going to slip that off and we'll just work from there. So I have a piece of the old olive again and that piece is uh, let me see it is three by four and a fourth three by four and a fourth this would make this two and seven eighths by three and one eighths so two and seven eighths by uh, four and one eighths so we'll put this on this part. And then this piece is from another pack of paper that you can earn from free uh, called Day at the Farm. And on the back of that, you can see there are some trees and some cows and flowers that I wanted to use this side. And this is cut at, ah, let's see, two, let me see, I can't remember what I said. Okay, two and three-fourths by four. Oops, and I dropped it and got a little bit of glue there where I shouldn't have it. That's okay. I'm just going to rub that for now, and I can get that off later after it dries. Now I've got a little piece of linen thread, and about halfway down, I'm going to add this to the back. And I am going to just do that with some regular scotch tape. So there. And then I'll do that. Now, if you want to make sure it's perfectly straight, use your grid paper. So I can look. I've got it straight here, and I can look across. And I know it needs to go right in there. 
So I've got that there. And I'm going to put another piece of tape. And again, that tape is going to be hidden uh, behind the belly band. I hope most of it will anyway, but nobody's really going to look back there at that anyway. So I'm going to add this to the belly band. I'm going to put it back on. I should have left it on. Oops. And I might have made mine a little bit tight. Okay, there we go. Because when I put this on the belly band, I want to kind of make sure that it's centered on the card. So I'm going to put some glue right in there. And then I'm going to lay this. I think I've got this about halfway here. And then I'm just going to lay that down so that it looks like it's about even all the way around. And we'll just push that down. And I think I'll maybe let that sit just a little bit. Now, I put a moon up there. I'm going to add that with dimensionals. And I cut my moon out of crushed curry. So we're using uh, Old Olive, soft suede, and now a little bit of crushed curry has been added. I'm just going to go ahead and put that up in the top. And we're going to stamp an owl. This is from the, well, let me show you where I got that circle first. This is from the palm dies. That's what I used for that circle for uh, out of crushed curry. And then I used the dies, the uh, stylish shapes dies, and I used this third one in for my squares, okay? And I needed three of the squares, three of the squares. Okay, um, so I am going to ink up with uh, Memento ink, the owl that looks like it is flying, that one. He looks like he's flying. So I'm gonna put him here. And normally I would say to you, stamp and then cut. In the interest of time, I'm trying it this way and I, I don't know that I'll get it stamped perfectly, but we'll, we'll do the best we can. So, hopefully that will work. All right, that's a pretty good image on here. And then I'm also going to go ahead and stamp my little sign that's going to go under there. And it says, it's your day. So, and I, I, well, we'll just see how that goes. I'm going to have to stand up, I think. Well, that is not a good thing. I'm going to turn it on the back. The stitching won't look quite the same. But we'll see. And I don't know how in the world that got so crooked. Okay, still not the greatest. And I happen to have another one over here. So let me try just one more. I think we're going to go with that one and count it, count us lucky <laughs> to have it. Okay. Now I'm going to be coloring my owls with uh, blends. And I'm going to be using several different ones. Let me get that put back over, put back over here. And um, here are the blends I'm going to be using. Uh, maybe dark and soft, dark and light of the soft suede, dark and light of uh, crumb cake. 
think I've got another light from Cake Dark and light daffodil delight a dark pumpkin pie and then dark and light balmy blue i'll be using so um cut uh i did try to use the light and the dark colors i'm not so sure i'm going to do so much of that here on uh on here we'll just see how it goes so i'm going to start with the light uh soft suede and I am going to cut a uh, color with the small, the, the small end. And I'm just going to color in the top of the head there. And then I'll also color in down here on the wings. Uh, and you really don't have to blend it a lot. You can actually just color it uh, like this in one kind of solid look. Uh, and I think for this, for the video purposes, maybe that's what I'm going to do with my dark yellow or dark daffodil and color in the eyes. And then uh, let's see, we'll color in with a light uh, crumb cake. Some of these other parts. Now, of course, it would look a little bit better blended. And I did color in those eyes. And so you can see that by just coloring that, uh, it's going to be uh, a little bit faster to do. I think I, okay. Sorry about that. Okay, so I am going to add some dimensionals to the back of that. Okay, let's get those off. I'm using my take your pick tool. And so this is going to go there. We'll add our saying uh, and I have, I have a terrible top with dimensionals and there they were right in front of me and I couldn't see them. I'm just going to cut. I don't have my uh, my uh, mini dimensionals with me right here so we'll just use these and I'll cut them. Okay and we'll just pick those off and that will go right under here and then I have a bow that I made out of linen thread and I did use a bow maker to help me with that. That's the way, that's the only way I know how to really make bows. Um, I'm going to take a glue dot, glue dot and uh, 
roll it up and put it kind of right there at the edge of my owl. And then this is going to go right there. And that takes care of the belly band. So let's go talk about the inside of the card. And uh, what do you think? You like it just as well without all the shading? It does look a lot uh, simpler, doesn't it? But I think maybe for our purposes today, we'll just hurry up and get that done. All right, now I have a sign on the inside of my first card uh, right here that says, Hoot Hoot, you're so cute. And I got that little rectangle from the stitched rectangles. And it's this one that's kind of by itself over here that I used for that. And so let me get my saying, hoot, hoot, you're so cute. And our memento. And we'll get that. And uh, I try to lay it straight on my paper because I think it helps me to get it straight on the card. So, ah, I didn't get it inked up so great. So let's try it on the back. Well, I have an extra one of that. Let's see if I can find it. Some days you got it, and some days you just keep trying. Okay. Straight down, straight up. You I still got a little bit of that line up there. This one is one we're going to use. I really can stamp. And I'm going to set that aside. And I also had a moon in there. Now you can see that that is a different size than this moon. And I'm going to use contraband for that. I'm going to pull in a punch. And this is a retired punch. It's a one and a half inch punch. And I'm going to do that because I just wanted to show you an easy way to do a moon. And you can do the very same thing with your die. So I'm going to go ahead and punch my circle. And then I can come over and you see my moon shape right there. So I can do it just like that. And I have my moon. Okay, so you could do the very same thing with your, your die. You can use the layering circles. Uh, you could use this one from the palms. Cut it out, and then you're just going to move it up over your cutout, and, and uh, you'll end up having, and then cut through it again, and you'll end up having that moon shape. So you can do with that with your dies, or you could pull in the contraband like I did today with the punch for the moon. So these are the things that we're going to put on the inside of our card as well as our owls again. So I'm going to go ahead and punch out this owl, or not punch, but, but ink up this owl. I kind of think sometimes with the memento I do better if I turn the stamp over and ink it up that way. So let's see how that will work. And we're going to try to get him right in the middle. Okay. And then we'll do our other owl. So let's ink him up. Oh, 
Okay. But there's going to be a problem with this owl because his hat extends over the edge of the square. But I think we can fix that. So I'm going to go ahead and step him down. Can't seem to get that straight. Okay. And so I'm going to stamp him on my square. And then I'm going to pull in a scrap and I'm going to ink up just the top part of him. And I'm going to stamp him again just to get that hat. So I'll have to show you how we're going to do that. So let's do him first. And I'm going to color my hat. Let me bring him in so you can see how he is. So I'm going to take my uh, dark balmy blue. And I'm going to color in these stripes. Okay, and I'll cut out the hat. And I'm just going to cut this one right on the lines as best I can get it. Okay, and then for the head, I'm going to cut around that and I'm going to get my light piece. I see I forgot to color in those stripes. Okay, and I'm just going to do it like that, and I think that we can glue that right in place, right there. So, let me get my light, my light uh, soft suede, get my small end, and I'm going to color in that part right in there. So it will match up here. And you don't have to color in that hat that's on this part. I like the way you can, the, the blend color will just go together so nicely and, and it will blend. It won't show your marks. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and put just a little bit of glue right in here. I probably have too much glue right there, so I'm going to take a little scrap and just pull some of that off of there. So I've got a little bit of that out of the way, and we'll put our little hat up there. Okay, so he's ready to, to go. Hmm. I think the 
better leave that alone. Okay, we'll take our light crumb cake. That's the dark. Here's our light crumb cake. And get all that pulled. And I might could go a little bit faster with the uh, bigger nib, but uh, actually my other one is getting a little worn out, but I still have, this one is still so good, I don't want to just throw it away. So that's what I've been doing. Okay. We'll do our beak and our feet and our eyes. Let's get that bright yellow. Okay, and we have one more owl to color quickly. So I'm going to get this time the dark uh, balmy blue and we'll color his bow tie. I'll get this little piece here. And I guess all of that is going to be the darker. And I probably should have just colored this ahead of time. Maybe it's not taking too long. Okay. I really do think these owls are as cute as they can be. And I think that this one is starting to run out. I think when it starts making that noise, it is just about done for. But these have lasted a long time. All right, and we're ready for the eyes. Now, I can get rid of those, and we are ready to get this thing together. So you have uh, two strips that are three-fourths of an inch wide, and they are four and an eighth inch long. 
you're going to score those at three fourths, one and a half, and three and three eighths. And we will uh, use our bone folder and we're going to fold those like this. They're going to fold in, fold down each time. So you're going to end up having kind of a funny U shape. Uh, well, I don't know what that, what you call that, but anyway, it's going to look like that. So let me do this one. Now, see how that went kind of crooked when I folded it? Straighten it up. Because you want it all to be straight. Okay. Now, when we put them in, they're going to end up be looking like this. So, let's talk about how to do that with this one. But first of all, I want us to kind of lay our owls down and see when we're where we're going to want to put them because we don't want them to overlap. We want to have room. We want we don't want one, one down here and one over here uh, like that. You want to get it kind of evenly uh, spaced on that. So if I have that one, I would want to put this about here. Now, I didn't really measure it, but I'm just trying to figure out about where I would want it. And actually, it's going to go this way. So you're going to put glue on this part that's all by itself. See, there's two bins over here, but you want to put glue on the one that's all by itself. So let me do that. And the rest of the uh, stuff is going up. Everything's going up. And I'm going to want it to be about there. So I'm going to sit it here above the fold because you've got to have it still fold. So kind of above the fold. And I want to try to have it on there straight. Straight. So there's the first part. Now I'm going to take this and bend it all the way back, all the way back, and I'm going to put glue on the last one. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to fold it shut. And when I open it, I have my mechanism. So let's try that again over here. Now I want this one to be about like that. So I'm going to take this part that's by itself. I'm going to put glue back here on this side. I'm going to place it about midway where I want it to be, just above the fold, because I want it to be able to pick up and close. All right, so now I'm going to bend all of this back. I'm going to put glue on the last one. I'm going to hold that as it is and close. Okay, and when I open it, there's my mechanism. So I'm ready to put those on there. I'm going to put some glue here, and this owl is going to go right in there. And I'm just going to leave him, well, let's see if, okay, and a little bit of glue get back up there. So there's where he's going to go, and This one is going to go here. And I'm closing those to kind of make sure that they are straight. And this paper makes it easy because it's got the lines on it. Okay, so there they are. 
Now let me find my other little pieces. And I'm not sure where they are. Oh, here they are. So I'm going to put my moon. in there and my saying that doesn't look that great I might end up replacing that saying with another one okay so there's the inside of our card hoot hoot you're so cute and we'll put on our belly band um, if we may. Ah, trying to find it. Here it is hiding behind my punch. So that will go there. And we'll put this one here. So, uh, and it will go here. And I'm just going to let you compare a little bit with it blended with the darker color and just colored and it really uh, would be good either way either way uh, this one probably has a little more interest to it so let me let you compare the inside of both of those Okay, there you go. I just was afraid of how long this would all take and wasn't sure how much time I would have. So let me review that we use the adorable owls for our card, and this is going to be part of your celebration items that you can get for free. Now with a $50 order, you can get the adorable owls. And with a, another $50 order, you could get this pack called uh, Day at the Park. And I really should have brought those in, but I didn't. Uh, really cute pieces there. A lot, not, not a day at the park, a day at the farm. A lot of farm animals. It's a wonderful stamp set in the catalog that goes with that paper that has all the farm animals. I can't open it and show it to you. And uh, then, with a $100 purchase, you can get a, a pack of 48-sheet paper that has di just pretty designs, pretty designs like this one and this one uh, to use, uh, and lots of uh, pretty colors on that. I can read, I can open this for just me, and I can read to you the colors that are in that paper is balmy blue calypso coral fresh freesia granny apple green mango melody and petal park so you can imagine some of these designs and some of those colors well uh look for my uh blog post uh and i will link everything on this post on youtube thank you so so much for joining me today uh, as i said it's been a long time since i've done a uh, video and I'm certainly glad you were here with me. Uh, if you need supplies, I would love for you to buy them from me if you don't have anyone else, uh, if you don't have another demonstrator. And you can find the link to my store right here on lovetocreate.typepad.com. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.